Hello everybody, and today we're we'll taking a look at the GTX 970. This card released back in July of 2014 for about $330. This was the graphics card that I used in my first gaming computer and it served me well. Since then though, I've moved on to a much better system and only occasionally use the card in my old one. Initially, the GTX 970 was received well by the hardware community and offered great performance for a reasonable price. However, in later driver updates from Nvidia, there was a significant decrease in performance which some speculate was since the car was overpowered for the price point and Nvidia wanted consumers to spend more on high-end cars and decrease the longevity of the 970. Regardless, my my Strix installment of this car was a good model to serve through hell in my old case that ran with the infamously hot FX 9590. That same PC will be what we utilize in our test today and comes along with 32GB of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1600MHz. Now, let's take a look at the specific hardware that this card sported. To start off, it comes with quote unquote 4GB of GDD R5 VRAM clocked at 1753 MHz on the 256 bit bus width. This card also has 104 texture mapping units, 56 render output units, and 1664 cores with a base clock of 1114 MHz that boosts up to 1253 MHz. In addition, this car was built off the 28 nanometer process, utilizes the Maxwell architecture and supports up to DirectX 12 and has a TDP of 148 watts. Now, before we get into testing, we need to take a look at this graphics card's controversial history. As I previously mentioned, in the later NVIDIA drivers, there was a significant decrease in car performance in some tasks, and it was rumored that NVIDIA was slowing down the card since it was deemed too powerful, and they preferred you to buy the more powerful and expensive GTX 980, 980 Ti, or one of the Titan cards. But even though the GTX 970 performs better on older drivers, all testing today will take place on the most recent drivers for this card. There was a much larger issue with this card though, and that was its half gigabyte partition of slower VRAM. You see, the GTX 970 was given 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM, and an additional half gigabyte of slower RAM. Due to this, many GTX 970 owners noticed that while running games that the card would only use 3.5 gigabytes of VRAM and or that performance would significantly decrease after crossing that 3.5 gigabyte threshold. This came to light a while after the card's release and after many class action lawsuits and Nvidia concluded that they would pay $30 to anyone who bought the GTX 970 before its issues became well known. It left a bad taste in many consumers' mouths, but many still did purchase the card new just as I did 5 years ago. All games today were ran in the resolution of 1600 by 900 unless otherwise specified and for the most part all the highest options were selected. But enough of that, you came here to see if the GTX 970 is worth its price on the used market and how well it performs. So with that out of the way, let's hop into some testing and benchmarking. I began testing this card on Fortnite, which, for its recommended system requirements, cited a GTX 660 or better. Obviously, the 970 surpasses that and testing went well and smoothly on this card. The average frame rate was 88 and performed well with all the settings on their highest. As expected, Fortnite ran well on this card and now performs many other graphics cards in this game. Sticking with Battle Royale games, the next title tested was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. I've not had this issue previously, but for some reason, the mouse decided to just not work well in game. I was able to alter the settings though, and I selected a general mixture of the higher settings. Even though I selected the unlimited frame rate option, the highest frame rate was still 60 where it appeared to be capped at due to the refresh rate of the monitor. Overall, performance in this title was amazing and the card performed excellently. Another esports title I tested on this card was Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This game was released back in 2012 so I ran all the settings on the highest. Obviously, the card performed very well with this game in these settings and the average frame rate came to be a solid 135. There was no stuttering at all and this was another successful gaming experience. I then took a look at our last and most modern of the Battle Royale games, Apex Legends. This game is the most recently released one that I tested today, debuting on February 4th of 2019 and just recently passed its 1 year anniversary. All settings for this game were run at their maximum without V-Sync and the average frame rate came out to be 60. Once again, the GTX 970 is shown to easily handle modern games all while in the higher settings in the game. I then took a look at our final esports game, Rocket League. Not our oldest game, but still half a decade old, the GTX 970 was, as predicted, able to run this game perfectly. All settings were at their maximum and the average frame rate was 60, once again offering enjoyable gameplay. I then dove into some single player games, starting with Minecraft. I used to play Minecraft on this exact PC and I remember performing well, so I wanted to see if its performance still held up to how I remembered it. I selected all the fancy options that had chunks set to a reasonable amount of 15. After a variety of testing, the average FPS was 98 and gameplay was smooth and enjoyable. Our next single player game was one of the most demanding games tested today, Rise of the Tomb Raider. For 1080p, the recommended specifications cited GTX 970, so we were just barely able to scrape by. 
Regardless, I ran this game with a very high preset and saw a decent, playable average of 59 FPS. Now, although it was a small one, there was an issue with the car while playing this game on it. Whenever I went to load in a new area, there was a significant drop in the frame rate to a point where it was very noticeable and impacted gameplay experience a bit. With a few lower settings though, this could be combated. For the last game tested on this car, I ran one of my all-time favorite games, Just Cause 3. This game was released back in 2015, so I set it all to the highest available options without VSync. After testing, the average frame rate was 80 FPS and gameplay was overall excellent. The only downside was to be expected, and that was a slight decrease in performance as the action heated up, but it was none too noticeable and did not significantly impact performance. After reviewing the benchmarks of the GTX 970 and today's testings, I've concluded that the GTX 970 is still a good card to buy that delivers exceptional performance. Even though there are graphics cards that perform much better, it will be hard to find a card that can outperform this one at its price point. On the used market, I was able to find a fully functional one for about $90 on eBay and more for similar prices on local sellers such as on OfferUp. Other cards that perform similarly to this would be the GTX 1060 3GB version, but on the used market they generally cost a bit more. So, essentially, if you're on a tighter budget, I'd recommend purchasing the GTX 970 over the GTX 1060, but if you have a little extra money, I'd recommend buying the GTX 960 3GB or even 6GB. Both of those cards offer similar performance, but the GTX 1060 has the advantage of having increased longevity in terms of driver support, and this performs slightly better in some aspects. Overall though, the GTX 970 has proven itself to be very capable in modern day gaming tests, even though it has a very controversial history. It can still run many titles at their maximum settings and a decent framer overall, and I would recommend this card to budget gamers. Regardless, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interactions with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm. While you are at it, please subscribe because it helps a lot in video quality and production and also positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day. Bye!